Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight on our news. A new era of taxation as value-added tax increased to 12% today. The latest on a boating accident in Exuma that left one visitor dead and several others nursing serious injuries. Meanwhile, have you seen this woman? Police say she was last seen leaving her home in Exuma and a basketball camp is sharpening the skills of Bahamian youth. News is brought to you by Alive. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Jared Higgs. Topping news tonight, it's day one of the 12% value added tax era. The implementation comes just one month after the tax hike was announced in the House of Assembly. It's a decision that many opposed, but government insisted was a bitter, necessary option. Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist broke the news to the nation on May 30th as he, the Minister of Finance, laid out the country's fiscal plan heading into 2019. The government is proposing an increase in the rate of value-added tax from the current 7.5% to 12% effective July 1. It was a move that was criticized for its swiftness, with groups such as the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce and Employers Confederation taking offense to government's lack of consultation with them on the budget. Hundreds protested government's tax proposals, telling them to keep their corned beef. A dig at government adding corned beef to the list of bread basket items, which will be made VAT exempt on August 1st. And despite a heated day, government didn't budge. With the list of detractors growing, government made their case insisting that the country's fiscal future depended on increased revenue. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who was a sharp critic of value-added tax when it was introduced in January 2015, said that his government considered a rate of 15%, which would ultimately be too burdensome. He says they also considered a rate of 10%, which he says would not have been good for future generations. We therefore came to the realization that an increase in the rate a VAT to 12% was the only and reliable option to allow us to deal with all the fiscal pressures present. Minnis insisted that the increase in VAT was necessary due to fiscal mismanagement, overspending and unpaid obligations by the Christie administration, pointing to actual deficit totals that at times doubled budgeted deficit totals under the former administration Minnis stated that more revenue was needed for government to close a $400 million fiscal gap. He also pointed to the economic situation in fellow CARICOM nation Barbados, where that country's recently elected prime minister had to call in the International Monetary Fund to help ease their fiscal woos. Minnis has said he doesn't wish to be in that position. And while government touted new initiatives such as free tuition at BTVI, VAT-exempt BPL bills under $200, and VAT-free medicine, members of the opposition zeroed in on government's tax hike, calling it burdensome on the Bahamian people. Meanwhile, three FNM MPs found themselves out of their jobs after they voted no to the VAT amendment bill as government ultimately passed its controversial budget. MP for Baines and Grantstown, Travis Robinson, and MP for Golden Isles, Vaughn Miller, were fired hours after their no vote from their parliamentary secretary jobs. Pine Ridge MP Frederick McElpine was asked as chairman of the Hotel Corporation, while Centerville MP Reese Shipman, another FNM who voted against the tax hike, was fired for undisclosed reasons earlier this year. Groups such as the Bahamas Real Estate Association have insisted as recently as Friday that value added tax at 12% and at such short notice will have a negative impact on the industry. Government's promise that the budget will be balanced within three years was dismissed as unlikely by former Deputy Prime Minister Frank Watson, who also called the 12% VAT hike harsh. Many Bahamians spent their Saturday trying to beat government to the punch, getting in their last shopping at a VAT rate of 7.5%. On January 1, 2015, $1, for all intents and purposes, became $1.08. Today, it's $1.12, with $0.12 cents earmarked for government's coffers. Government has predicted that it will collect an additional $450 million per year at that new, higher rate. We're following a developing story out of Exuma. A visitor is dead and several others are injured after a boat engine exploded on a, chart, on a chartered tour boat. Twelve people were on board that vessel, including ten tourists and two Bahamians. You can see the boat on fire in this video on your screen, shot from a nearby boat transporting dozens of other visitors. According to police, it was shortly after 9 on Saturday morning when the 40-foot chartered tour boat was traveling just off Bari Tari, Exuma. 
Ten persons in total were injured and transported to the mini hospital in Georgetown. All of those victims were ultimately airlifted for further medical treatment, with six being transported to New Providence and assessed at the Princess Margaret Hospital, and the other four transported to Clearwater, Florida, where they were seen by doctors there. Our news will continue following this developing story. Staying with news out of Exuma, a woman on that island is missing after police say she was last seen leaving her home on Thursday, June 28th. 22-year-old Javan Amanda Sands of Forest Exuma is described as being of a dark complexion, standing at approximately 5 feet 7 inches in height and weighing about 170 pounds. Police are asking anybody with knowledge of Sands' whereabouts to contact the police on Exuma at 336-2666 or 7 or Crime Stoppers at 328 Tips. And another woman is missing, this time in the capital after a man shot two people he was sitting in a car with. Reports are that it was shortly before 10 on Saturday night when two men and a woman were sitting in a vehicle outside a home on Peach Street, Pastel Gardens. According to police, a man sitting in the rear of the vehicle produced a firearm and shot the other occupants of the vehicle. The man was able to escape the vehicle and ran to a house for assistance. The suspect drove off in the vehicle along with the woman who was believed to be injured. The automobile in question is a brown Nissan Cube with a license plate number of AM9396. The injured man was taken to hospital, where he is listed in serious but stable condition. Police are also on the hunt for a silver Toyota Paso with license plate number AK7455. They say that vehicle was stolen during an armed robbery that took place late Saturday night and was used to commit another armed robbery early on Sunday morning. In the first incident shortly before 11 p.m. on Saturday, a man was on the outside of a wash house on Joe Farrington Road when he was approached by three men, one armed with a firearm, who robbed him of cell phones before getting into his silver Toyota Paso. Later at around 4 a.m. on Sunday morning, a man was selling snacks outside a wash house on Carmichael Road when he was approached by two men, one armed with a firearm, who robbed him of, who robbed him of cash before getting into a silver vehicle, license plate number AK7455, and speeding away. And that's not all. Also in the capital last night, a motel on St. Albans Drive was hit by armed robbers. According to reports, three armed men entered the motel's office shortly after 11 and held an employee at bay. They made good their escape after stealing cash. Also, police are investigating an armed robbery that took place over on the island of Eleuthera. A woman was on a beach at Rainbow Bay shortly after 3 when she was approached by two men, one armed with a knife who robbed her of cash before fleeing on foot. Moving now to two news from the post office, the working conditions at the general post office on East Hill Street will not be improving anytime soon. That's according to Minister of Transport and local government Frankie Campbell, revealing it can take up to six weeks to be fixed. Jasmine Brown reports. Mold, improper ventilation and humid conditions are among the challenges facing post office staff. Many of the issues stem from an aging building and more recently a malfunctioning air conditioning system and aging generator that are unable to adequately supply the building's needs. While there is constant electricity, we seem to pay very little attention to backup generators until we actually need them. And so uh, a problem developed with a breaker panel in the post office, which necessitated the use of the backup generator, only to find that the backup generator was not sufficient to power the air conditioning system. And so while there was some electricity, they didn't have any ventilation, because that's a new air conditioning system that we put in since we came to office. Campbell confirmed that they are currently looking for a replacement part for the breaker panel. The part that is needed, because it's an old part, more than 30 years old, they have to go and search for it, or the manufacturers have to make it. Um, I'm advised that there is an urgent search going on. If we could find it, we'd be able to make the repairs in a week or two. If not, it'll take at least six weeks to be manufactured. In the meantime, employees have been forced to sit outside the building and work limited hours. Some of them have also been relocated to various satellite stations across the island. That's not the most comfortable um, situation because there's a space issue. And secondly, if the general post office is not functioning, there is nothing really, no work to be done at the satellite stations. Campbell says the government is still forging ahead with its long-term strategy of moving the post office to the old Phil's Food Services building on Gladstone Road. He says there are currently weekly meetings to discuss the project's progress. I've arranged to have regular meetings with them every Monday moving forward until we get to a point where we move in. 
but at this point, and being given the undertaking, that the funds are there, they have to do some drawings, and then the work will start. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. When our news returns, find out what one environmental group is doing to ensure the protection of the Bahamas environment. That and more when our news comes back.